Hi, for this video I want to show you how to find the area under the normal curve given a z-score. Uh, so the first one that we have is left of z equals negative 1.78. And for this video I'm going to show you how to use the TI-84. I do have another video that shows you how to um, use the table and also one with how to use the TI-Inspire graphing calculator. Okay, so when you're starting these, it's always a good idea to sketch out your normal curve. It's a good habit to get into when dealing with normal models because when you get into hypothesis testing and other things, you will have to have a sketch. Okay, so the thing to remember with z-scores is that it's for the standard normal curve, which is centered at zero, and the z-score tells you basically on a number line how far to go to the left or to the right. So negative 1.78 is almost two standard deviations below. So it's talking about this little area right here. Okay, and we're trying to figure out how much did we shade in? What is that area? Um, so to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to hit in our calculator, we're going to go to the distributions that are programmed into our calculator, and we're going to look for normal CDF. And the information that you have to put in here, they're always going to ask for the lower, the upper, the mean, and the standard deviation. So the lower just means what's the lowest value that's shaded. Remember that this goes on forever and ever to infinity, so it continues forever and ever. So we're basically going to start at negative infinity on this, which is negative 1 E99, which basically the E is scientific notation, and it means negative 1 with 99 zeros behind it. So it's pretty much a very, very large negative number, okay? And then our stopping point would just be our z-score. So anytime it says to the left, we're gonna choose normal CDF, we're gonna start with negative one E99, and then we're gonna stop at the z-score that's given to us, and because we're dealing with a z-score, we're gonna use zero and one as our values, okay? So in this case, we would type in normal CDF, negative 1 E99 would be our lower, negative 1.78 is where we stopped shading, so that would be our upper, and then we would use 0 and 1. So let me grab my calculator, and in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to hit second and vars. Above it, it says D-I-S-T-R, that stands for the distributions. Those are all probability distributions. And we're going to choose option 2, normal CDF. The default in here is negative 1 E99, so if this doesn't show up in yours or you didn't get this table in your graphing calculator, because I know that some of the older 84s and all of the 83s don't have these options, the E is this button right here. If I hit second comma, that will allow me to plug in the E. So let me just pretend it wasn't there, so I'm going to type in negative 1 and then I'm going to hit second and the comma. 99 nine. and notice it puts in an e here do not use the green e that's different that's whatever was stored for the variable e and it will actually appear bigger in your um, calculator the upper for this one remember was negative 1.78 and then i'm just going to keep it as zero and one because we're dealing with a z-score so those of you that have an older calculator it would have just opened up as normal cdf and then an, an open parenthesis then you would just type it in to look like this Okay, and when I hit enter, my area is approximately 0 0.0375, and that's what we would put down. So area is 0 0.0375, and we typically round area to four decimal places. So um, our area is approximately 0 0.0375, so approximately 3.75% of the area falls to the left of negative 1.78. Okay, for the second one, we're going to go through this one a little bit faster, but again, we want to draw the picture. Because it's left, we would use the same um, basic information to plug in. So what I'm going to do is this time, since it's centered at zero, and we have a z-score of 0 0.34. 0 0.34 would be above the zero, so the area for this one's going to be much larger. It's going to be more than 50%. Because remember that 50% of your area falls by the center, okay? So for this, again, we're just going to grab our calculator and we're going to do second distributions, option two, and we would stop at 0.34, okay? And then we're just going to hit enter a couple times and our answer would be approximately 0.6331. 
so approximately 0.6331. So approximately 63.3% of the area falls to the left of z equals 0 0.34. So with this, basically for this part, the left, it's probably just as easy to look at a table if you are given the left. Um, but for the next two, the area to the right and the area between, um, it's easier to use the graphing calculator to find these, especially part D, because you can just plug it in exactly as it is. So for this one, to find the area to the right of Z equals 1.23, we're going to draw our curve, okay? Um, and then this time, because of the fact that we have 1.23, it's a little bit more than one standard deviation above. And so we would go ahead and shade this, but this time we're looking for the area to the right. So for this one, when we type it in, we're still going to use the normal CDF. But this time, our lower limit is the lowest part that we shaded, which is 1.23. And our upper limit would be the positive infinity. Okay, so this time you're going to switch it. Anytime you are looking for to the right of, this is what you're going to plug into your calculator. Your z-score is going to be your lower, positive infinity is going to be your upper, and then we're still going to use 0 and 1 because of the fact that we're dealing with a z-score. So um, grab my calculator, second distributions, and we're going to choose option 2, normal CDF. This time for my lower, I'm going to type in the 1.23. My upper is one, and I'm gonna hit the second comma button, nine, nine, and then I'm going to leave it as zero and one. Make sure you put in positive infinity and not negative infinity. If you put in a negative infinity here, um, it will give you a negative area, which doesn't make sense. Um, so if you hit enter, we see that it's 0 0.1093 approximately. Okay, so our area to the left is approximately point 1093, so approximately 10.93% of the area falls to the, and I said left, I meant right, to the right of z equals 1.23. And then for the last one, this one is by far the easiest to do in your graphing calculator. Because if you remember from a table, you have to find the area to the left of both of these and then do the area of the larger minus the area of the smaller. Well, with this one, what we have to do is we just type in normal CDF. And we just type in the lower z-score, the upper z-score, and 0 and 1. So for this one, we don't have to find it individually. We can say that this is negative 1.78. This is 1.2 approximately. And we're looking for the area in between here. So this is by far the easiest one to do in your graphing calculator. Um, so if I grab my calculator and plug it in, I'm going to hit second distributions. And I, again, choose normal CDF, not PDF. CDF is the cumulative distribution. And we would type in the negative 1.78. And then for the upper, we would type in the 1.2. And then we would hit Enter. And your graphing calculator may give you something slightly different from um, what you would get using the table and doing the larger area minus the smaller area. That's because this one is more accurate because it's keeping it to more than four um, decimals. And in the tables, because everything is rounded to four decimal places, it's not as accurate. So for this one, we end up with 0.847, and then this rounds up to four, and it actually gives you very, very close to what you would get with the table. Okay, sometimes it's going to be further off than other times. So our area between these two values is approximately 8.8473. So just to kind of recap, remember that if you're using normal CDF, if it's between, it's just the lower and the upper. If it's to the right of, you start with the z-score and end with positive infinity. And if it's to the left of, you start at negative infinity and add end at the z-score given. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. Don't forget to check out all of the other video content that I have. And if there's additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know. And if you get a chance, please subscribe.